Sure. Now the Quilla is a revolutionary device with a reflective display, which you can see in the sunlight works beautifully. So it's so we're right here with direct sun. Uh, we're getting some nice natural sun Absolutely. and doing a brainstorm at the same time. Yep, works as good in the sun as it does anywhere else. In fact, even better. Um, it's a 42 inch from side to side, four by three aspect ratio, just the same size as a, a, a flip chart. Feels exactly like a flip chart, has features like a flip chart. Here's a little thing, let you curl your paper back um, and go to your previous sheet where you're doing some other brainstorming or then flip forward back to where you, you were before. You can move stuff around. We know the difference between using a um, you know, drawing with a finger or sorry, drawing with a pen and selecting with a finger, moving items around, erasing with the back of the pen. So when you All pan very, around, basically the page is as unlimited size? Yes, unlimited page, you select, and that can shrink down. And I can just keep keep moving over here as well too, right? So, so if, if, for example, if the, the regular ways people use uh, TVs, if this was in the direct sunlight, it would have been having all these reflections, it would be impossible to see a uh, regular display. Yeah, absolutely. And it would become tiring on the eyes over time. This is a reflective display, uh, literally digital ink. So it's just like um, to your eyes, the same thing as ink on paper. So the same sort of thing, reflective technology. And uh, can you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Mike Maybe. I'm from Quirk Logic, the CTO. And we're talking about uh, Quilla, our new product. And let me introduce to you as well, our CEO, Nashir Samanani. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Nashir Samanani, as Mike mentioned, and uh, we're actually very ex excited now that uh, Quilla is actually launched in the marketplace and uh, we're starting to get uh, traction with customers. Let me give you some examples of the kinds of usage that we're actually this getting This could from be customers. for like uh, architects or... Absolutely. In fact, one of the areas that uh, we are uh, getting uh, uh, quite a bit of dem demand is in, in the uh, architecture construction area. Um, and examples of the kinds of usage uh, that uh, our clients are actually looking at is blueprints are a good example. When, uh, when they're, uh, they've got a site, a construction site, and uh, they've got a head office, uh, they're constantly generating blueprints based on changes that are actually happening on the construction site. And uh, they're having to print out these massive sets of uh, uh, giant size blueprints that actually cost quite a bit of money. What, what they're now doing is, you know, using drawings and constructions between two sites. Uh, one could be at the head office, the other could be at, uh, at a construction site. And Mike there, who uh, is marking up what's going on at the construction site, you know, he wants to change that from a bedroom to, uh, uh, and put a bed there or define it differently. Uh, and the stuff you're doing there is syncing over the internet, over the cloud? And we can see it right here. And, uh, and you know, I can actually mark it up here as well. And uh, you know, Mike can be uh, hundreds of miles away, and uh, we can all uh, collaborate together to try and uh, make sure that uh, the uh, what's happening at the site, the architects actually reviewing and approving in, in real time. So, so before they would use FedEx, and they would they yeah. would print out big things, right? Yeah, I mean, I, and uh, every time they make these kinds of changes, they would print out you know one set that goes to the construction site, another set that goes to the architect, another set that goes to the electrical engineer. And these are uh, very costly, also um, not green at, at all. So now you can put these devices at both ends and, um, uh, and uh, have a solution that's in real time, actually. So. And uh, there's so many markets for this, right? What's your, but what's your target, the, the, the biggest market right here? We're in a hotel. Okay, there's like, it looks like business centers yes. or something like that. Yeah. So uh, that's the market? Well, you know, that's one of the markets. Uh, actually, you uh, picked up the hospitality industry. So as, as you can see, hospitality industry rents out um, uh, video screens and uh, projectors and uh, and this is the way uh, uh, Samsung Microsoft everybody's doing uh, uh, they're doing whiteboards some of them are doing more and more whiteboards they are all LCD based LCD yeah they're all LCD based and and the other problem is that they're all nailed to a wall or they're chained to a wire but ideation actually is very fluid process it actually doesn't happen in uh, in one corner you know you, you need to be portable, and so you need to be able to move um, wherever that ideation actually happens. So you could be next to a water cooler someplace, and directly uh, up on the balcony. It could be in, on a nice day. You could go to the next to the swimming pool and continue to brainstorm. And the beauty of the Quilla is that it's uh, fully portable. It's the largest screen in the world that actually is on a battery, um, and uh, you can you can uh, right now you see there's no connections, no wires, and uh, you can run for 16 hours and. Uh, before you need to uh, recharge and so 
It's uh, fully portable. It actually moves around where... Uh, it's capacitive. It's, uh, yeah, Mike can talk about that, certainly. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. We have two different touch technologies. We have the capacitive technology for your, your fingers that will allow you to do multi-touch. Um, and then we have a different technology that, that does the pen. And because we have two different ones, you, we're able to differentiate between the two. So without bringing up any UI whatsoever, I can draw with the pen, erase with the back, and touch and do gestures uh, with fingers. So, uh, and the, the pen is, uh, is similar to Wacom? Technology? Yes, yeah, it's a very similar technology as well, yes. All right. Very high resolution. So the kinds of customers that we're talking to, uh, we've got, uh, as I mentioned, architecture, construction, but uh, really anyone that um, is uh, in a creative process. Um, so as Mike was showing you earlier, uh, teams uh, uh, that are highly collaborative, that, uh, that uh, innovate and, and cr uh, are creative, they come together, they brainstorm all the time. Uh, this is ideal for them. So corporate environments, in meeting spaces, in collaboration spaces, in huddle spaces, um, everywhere that uh, you need uh, uh, teams actually coming together and brainstorming. And for, and for the first time, we've done this in such a way that you can now brainstorm in a way that's very similar to writing surfaces like uh, that you're familiar with. So paper or whiteboards. Uh, this is walk up and use technology. It's always on. Um, and. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's unlike uh, LCD technologies, you know, where you've got to uh, configure it uh, or hook it up to a computer. Or, uh, this, is, this is different. Um, it's uh, always ready to go and it's fully portable uh, on a battery, as I mentioned so earlier. You have the, the full software. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, you have a bunch of software already ready, but yes. you, you will do more and more stuff in the future for the software? Absolutely. And so uh, this is not just unique hardware. Uh, what we've actually also done is we recognize in speaking with our customers that part of the issue was that uh, uh, as these ideas emerge in corporate environments, these intellectual assets, as they emerge, corporations did not have a way to actually capture this and manage it in real time. So what we've done is we've created the world's first real-time ideation ecosystem. And that combined with the Quilla hardware now gives corporation a complete uh, ability to be able to capture these uh, uh, innovation and ideas and creative ideas as they emerge in real time save them, manage them, recall them, and continue to build uh, upon them as well. And so how do, how do you compare in uh, terms of pricing compared to the LCD-based uh, whiteboards? Yeah, we're very competitive in the marketplace, and uh, they're priced actually uh, uh, to, uh, so, uh, so that uh, customers actually can buy them, not just in uh, uh, corporations, but uh, we're actually getting good traction in uh, education as well. Uh, so not, not necessarily more expensive than the high-end whiteboards uh, of the absolutely competitors? Absolutely not, right, absolutely not. And in fact, uh, we've got pricing models that uh, are highly uh, competitive. And if a company wants to buy 10 pieces or 500 pieces, there's uh, discounts, right? You know, absolutely. Uh, just like uh, uh, any other model, we, uh, if uh, an uh, enterprise wants to do an enterprise-wide deal, uh, certainly, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're working with customers on that as well. And uh, what more could maybe happen in terms of uh, software functionalities in the future? Is there any chance this could sync up with different, different devices too, the phones? Yes, absolutely, like that. and that's a very good observation. So there's uh, the ecosystem that Nashir talks about where all of this data is saved in, uh, in the cloud um, will be accessible to multiple devices over time. We've built it to be very device agnostic, and the devices here are very easy. You just touch them, and then you can just say, I want to update them to the latest software. So as you get a device, your software update, and we'll be putting out releases that will work on various other platforms as well over time that will allow you to access the data and inter interact with it. You know, that, that issue about uh, smartphones is that uh, right now what happens is that if you've got all of these intellectual assets emerging in corporations, people take uh, pictures of that on their smartphone, it's a personal device, and then at the end of the day it walks out the door, and so corporations have, have no ability to be able to manage that. And so what we've done is the ecosystem here actually allows the corporation to know exactly where those uh, emerging uh, creative ideas are and uh, they can lock them up, they can store them, uh, but yet at the, at the same time, the creative teams have full accessibility to this and to continue to uh, evolve the ideas into, so, uh, into uh, in innovation. So in highly sensitive er uh, areas, maybe governments or agencies or something, they could, uh, they could have a smartphone free area, but the Quila is okay because uh, absolutely. it will be safe. Absolutely. Uh, everything you put here is staying in the... In fact, uh, you, can, you can brainstorm on this, have all of your creative ideas, it's automatically saved, and when you walk away, it all shuts down, there's nothing on the surface, so you don't have to have a whiteboard that says, please do not erase anymore. 
um, all of that um, uh, disappears because uh, you've got it um, automatically stored um, in a secure, safe uh, yeah, environment. Yet yeah, the device continues to run and use as a flip chart. And, and it's very, just your data is, is it secure. quick to log in, log out, different people? Uh, yes, absolutely it is. So I can sign out of this uh, right there. And if I sign out, then you notice the, as Nashir said, the content's no longer available. But this is still a device like this. Now, if I wish to log in, um, uh, logging in can actually be a, a very quick process. Oh, I it's just, got a I can, QR code. Yes, uh, you have a QR code, and you can use that to uh, connect yourself in with your phone. And nice. So it's just walk up and uh, get yourself recognized, and now Mike's environment actually just popped back up. But so it doesn't matter what Quila he walks over to, his data actually follows him ar around so wherever he goes. These are all the workbooks that are associated with my login, and I can go into any one of them. Nice. So you got all your secret plans in there. Absolutely. All your, uh, your uh, roadmap. Uh, roadmap, brainstorming, uh, meeting notes, um, uh, all sorts of uh, any kind of ideation that you do, you would uh, uh, collect on here. We use it for everything. We use it for our meetings. We use it for um, uh, keeping track of meeting notes, actually. It's uh, very good at that because right at the end of the meeting, all the notes are there. Next meeting, you just continue from where you left off. And it doesn't matter which room you go to. You go into another room as long as it has the Quilla. It, all your content comes up and you just continue from where you left off. So where do you manufacture? And if people make a big order, are you ready to, to deliver it quickly? Absolutely. In fact, manufacturing's been uh, already set up since last year. Uh, we are, uh, we've got a tier one manufacturer and uh, our factory is set up in Malaysia and uh, already sh uh, shipments are happening to customers. So we are actually ready. So any large shipments are uh, already being shipped um, as, as we speak. Hi there, I'm Max Serrell. I'm a sales development rep here at Quirk Logic. I'm here with uh, Zamina Hashem and uh, Matt Walsh, and uh, we're going to showcase uh, our product, Quilla, and some of the features that it, uh, it provides to connect multiple user groups together for uh, real time ideation and collaboration. So, you're going to show more of the collaboration feature, the, the, the cool software you have running right here, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, what we've provided here is, uh, is a product that's going to allow you to connect multiple user groups together, um, as well as multiple devices to kind of add to that collaborative effort. Uh, that goes on in so many um, businesses today. So how does it look like? How does it work? Yeah, Can absolutely. So uh, they're all connected right now? Yeah, absolutely. They're all connected. So yes. I've got a little bit of a SWOT analysis yeah. here. Um, all these devices are synced up um, such that we can actually communicate them uh, to and from each other. So I'm going to assign uh, Zamina uh, the strengths. I'm going to give Matt the opportunities. Um, weaknesses are a big question mark for us. And, uh, and so now that, they've, now that I've written on this, they actually have the ability to, to see the same content that I've created um, on, the, uh, on the other devices. And in fact, what I can do is I can just zoom in onto my section and focus on this. So for strengths for the product, we have portability. And everything you're doing, uh, it goes in, in there over Wi-Fi, over the cloud? That's correct. It's all, uh, all through the uh, cloud services. All right. And the stuff that you're going to be doing over here? Yeah, absolutely. So I can come in and do the same thing. Expand my area here. I'll talk about opportunities. So I'll talk about the market, right? So anybody with a uh, any enterprise customer with a conference room, right? Does it fit? The other thing I would say is design architect. And if you zoom out over here, you exactly. can basically see what he's doing exactly. also. Exactly. So if all of us were working on different sections, you'd see that I get the full view of all the content. And we could be across multiple offices working on this. All right. There, there's a... Uh, how many ideas is possible to have in this kind of... Is unlimited? Unlimited. You know, this is just a sample SWOT analysis template that we brought. But anything that is relevant to your company, to your organization, you can bring these as standard templates into the product. All right. Uh, one other thing I'd like to show you, Nicholas, is you notice we're in different locations here, and this one we purposely put in direct sunlight, so you can take a look as well, and you see zero glare, right, which is uh, not consistent when you come to large format nice. displays. Nice. Uh, can I just like zoom out like this? Yes, just two fingers right there. It's quick. And you'll notice as well that you've been given an unlimited canvas when you do that, so I can actually branch off here and create more little workspaces if I so choose. Um, and what we've done here is actually just imported this, uh, this SWOT analysis right through a PDF. So both, uh, there's, uh, there's the option to import through, uh, through USBs. There's two, uh, two USB ports at the bottom there. Two USB ports right um, here. 
that will allow you to import PDF, JPEG, and PNG files, and that's all we've done here is just imported a PDF template that we can now annotate on top of. What does it mean when it's green light right here? So that's just a power indicator. So uh, green is going to be 80% of power and above. Uh, yellow will be between 20 and 80%, and then red is going to be below 20%. So there's always kind of an indicator of, of uh, the power levels, as these are operating on battery, um, 22 hours of battery life. And they're only 22 pounds, or, uh, or sorry, 16 hours of battery life, 22 pounds. Um, so they are completely kind of portable in that respect as well. Permanent insulation, it would be an always on scenario where you just walk it and you start to write. So no need to turn it off at the end of the day. So it literally uses 5% of the power that a typical LCD would use. Cool. So um, uh, looking forward to, to maybe some even, it's potentially there, there could be more functionalities, right? More features that could be added or... Yeah, we're definitely working with a lot of customer groups right now in uh, kind of determining some new features that we're going to roll out uh, as we kind of go forward with our product roadmap. Um, but uh, but yeah, we're, we're very happy with, with how the product's showing so far, um, a number of different ways that we can kind of uh, utilize some feedback to um, bring in some different content, uh, connect to different devices, and really just expand that whole, uh, the whole product offering that we can, we can uh, do.